House of Reconvening to order Tuesday, October 18th. Uh, could we have a roll call, Ben? Nelson? Yes. Knapp? Yes. Rexenko? Yes. Goodchild? Yes. Wick? Yes. Um, I'd like to, uh, if you would, please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Motion to approve the agenda. <coughs> Motion made and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I'd like to welcome everyone in the chamber today, uh, particularly the uh, gentleman from the Mars Daily Sentinel, and most of all, you people that are watching over television at our meeting. Um, today we've got. Um, a general discussion uh, and uh, uh, the Mars Area Betterment Foundation update with uh, Mike Donlan on the Mars Area Betterment. Could you give us an update on that, Mike? No, that's in the action item. That's in the action item, the other one. Well, of course I can. <laughs> Thank you once again. This is Oh, my fifth time, I think, coming before you in uh, recent months since the Lamar's Area Betterment Foundation has been doing its fundraising uh, in support of that list, whole list of community betterment projects. Um, a couple of things to provide as, uh, as updates in, uh, in our work. Um, I'm pleased to report that uh, in addition to the fundraising that I'll tell you about in a minute, some of the actual uh, flow of our efforts in those funds are making its way now to the city for some of the uh, expenses associated with our project. Uh, the goal that we had set to support uh, uh, the work you had done earlier uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the Royal Theater project, uh, the 250000 was delivered to the city. Uh, so although you had advanced that in, in uh, the effort to accomplish that goal, now uh, the city is made whole in that effort by the contributions uh, from these other citizens and friends of these projects. Likewise, uh, a partial uh, payment on the expenses associated uh, with the uh, dredging and the, and the, uh, the camping area uh, has, been, has been sent. So we've begun the actual execution of our purpose in helping projects actually come to, come to fruition. So we're very pleased to let the community know that it's, uh, it's working just as we uh, had designed and in the mission of our foundation. Um, since um, uh, the last report, there have been uh, some other gifts that have made their way to us, uh, but in terms of a progress report, um, uh, we are at Four million six hundred ninety-one thousand and some change uh, of our entire uh, fundraising efforts. Uh, that means that for the match of the uh, the generous two point five million dollar Wells contribution, we have just a little over three hundred thousand to go, and uh, we have efforts underway to continue to accomplish that. It puts us at uh, eighty-eight percent of that target, which is uh, something. We're very pleased and proud with and grateful to everyone that has uh, contributed. Uh, one of the efforts that has been going on in the recent month or so uh, has been uh, in working in collaboration again with Wells. Uh, a lot of the uh, vendors and suppliers that work with them uh, have been uh, approached uh, in writing by Mike uh, Wells himself and then in follow-up I'm having additional conversations with some and some of those donations are beginning uh, to flow in. The other effort that I mentioned last time in my report is a general community-wide mailing to reach out and touch any of the folks we didn't uh, manage to come visit with and uh, give them a chance to chip in for these projects and help us get uh, <coughs> uh, the fundraising uh, uh, going on. Two significant donations that have made their way to us. Uh, <coughs> one you may have already heard about. It's kind of tangentially associated with the Motor Inn and the police and the General Motor and the, uh, uh, the Chevrolet uh, uh, arrangements that have been made. But uh, uh, Motor Inn of Lamar, Steve Ohm and his partners, even though they're, um, they've made the move they made, <coughs> they 
uh, put $10,000 on the table in recognition of all the support uh, that they've received from the community over the years. And uh, um, I told Steve that I would pass that along because uh, I think that's uh, a very meaningful gift. Uh, in addition, uh, with us here today from uh, High V, our local manager, uh, Greg Rottenhouse, is here. And he brings with him uh, uh, their donation from, uh, uh, from High V. And Greg, you want to come up? Maybe there are a few words he wants to say, and then we can do a quick photo, and then I'm done. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, Greg Ridinghouse, store director at Hy-Vee, um, and I'm very proud to come here today. As you know, Hy-Vee is uh, a firm believer in making the communities that we operate in strong. And when I was approached with this opportunity, um, I thought it was an absolute no-brainer. Um, and apparently so did our board of directors in West Des Moines when I approached them about this. So they granted us a check to present to the Lamar's Better, Betterment Foundation for $10,000. Oh, so I'm okay. going to present that today and, and uh, couldn't be more proud to do so. So thank you. Thank you. Mike, thanks a lot for the update uh, and letting citizens know where we stand and, and uh, keep them updated. Uh, this time we'll open up again for general discussion. Anybody that have, has any comments, uh, uh, concerns, uh, or good things to say about the city of Lamars, uh, all we do is ask them to step to the uh, podium and say their uh, name and address. And uh, uh, they can't make any decisions today. The council is at camp, but they're always willing to listen and learn. Dave Shepard. I just wanted to make a quick comment. We've had kind of a rough weekend here in town. And uh, I just want to say how proud I am of our emergency responders, police, fire, ambulance, uh, the Galen Catholic community, and things for coming together. Uh, one of the great things about living in a small town, and Rex, you've said it before, is the support that we give each other. One of the unfortunate things sometimes is when we have a tragedy, we know somebody or you know somebody in that family. So uh, everybody's been dealing with it very well, as best we can, uh, but I can't stress enough the council's support of public safety. We thank you for that, and the citizens' support, and uh, just the way those public safety people operate in this community's time of need, time and time again. Uh, as being the administrator of that stuff, uh, I just can't say enough for those folks that have to see things and deal with things a lot of people don't. So kudos to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I think everybody uh, feels the same as you do, and that's one of the advantages of being a small town. Any other uh, for discussion? If not, we're going to move on to uh, uh, thumbs up award, John. Nothing wrong. Uh, Clark? Steve? Uh, just how well, the construction at Plymouth and, and Central is going. The detour seems to be going well. Uh, I'm surprised at the lack of uh, how we don't have to wait for coming and going off that side road uh, as much traffic as comes through there. But uh, I think it's going quite well. Here's so. Rex? Pass today. I'll pass. Thank you. I have uh, one thing, and uh, it was took place last night. Uh, and it's from the uh, Community uh, uh, Foundation of Greater Plymouth County. And what it's possessed of is uh, uh, a small, uh, not small, but uh, uh, businesses and uh, public service uh, has an opportunity to write grants towards this. Uh, it's funded by the, uh, by the uh, gambling on, out of Sioux City, the Hard Rock Casino, and uh, thank the Lord, uh, Plymouth County's involved in this, and all their in all their towns are, and so is Lamar's. 
And last night, uh, we had the opportunity between the, uh, it involved the fire department, uh, the library, the YMCA, uh, the city of uh, Lamar's and the EMS people uh, to accept the checks uh, that we were, that they granted us. And I think the total, I just don't hold me to the total figure, but uh, I was just thinking through my mind this morning that it amounted to somewhere between eighteen and twenty thousand dollars that went to this group. So uh, I want to thank the uh, the, the uh, Community Better uh, Plymouth County Foundation for doing that. Consent items. All items under consent agenda will be conducted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on those items unless a request <coughs> is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. Today we have five of them. Approval of October 4th, 2016 regular meeting minutes. The list of bills for the period ending 10, 14, 16. Number three is a monthly financial statement for September 2016. Uh, the Powder Fluff Snowmobile, Snowmobile Club request and the LBIC loan is number five. Does any of the council members uh, want to visit about any of these before they vote? Motion to approve consent items one through five. Second. Sir, second. There's been a motion made, second, to approve items uh, uh, one through five. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, under the action items, I'd like no to stop, uh, no I'd like to uh, move no stop, uh, no cigarettes. Uh, number two up to number one, which is the plywood trail. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and, and, and visit about that one. Um, the uh, uh, Jeff Stanley uh, is here. Uh, Jeff is the chairman of the executive board for the Plywood Trail Group, uh, and uh, uh, his objective is to uh, share with us where they're at on the Plywood Trail. There's a lot of conversation and interest on it, Jeff. Yes, thank you, and, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we want to thank you for coming in and bringing us up to date, and uh, uh, certainly we want to support it. Yes, yes, thank you very much. I'm actually here for two reasons. Uh, the first is to thank uh, the City Council for their generous support of this trail over the course of the past uh, 15 months or so. Not only the financial support, uh, but the emotional support. Certainly this, uh, this trail is going to come with many complexities, and we know that we have a great partner in the City of Lamar's to help us not only construct this, this trail, but to help manage it going forward. Secondly, the, the support that we've gotten from Scott Langle, not only as a member of the executive committee, but, but his ability to provide some of the technical expertise that we've needed as we move forward has been invaluable. And I appreciate this council lot, allowing us uh, to tap into Scott, both for his leadership and for his technical uh, skills. All right, so with that, I'd like to provide an update on where we're at. Uh, we just completed phase three of our engineering survey. Uh, we are using Wayne Slofeld to, uh, to complete that work. The first two phases were really assessing the viability of the trail. Uh, after reviewing those studies, we believe that the trail is viable, certainly has some obstacles that we're going to have to address. Uh, but generally speaking, we believe that, that we have a trail that we can move forward with. The third phase is looking at the specific obstacles that we're going to have to face. Uh, for those that are familiar with the specifics of the trail. It is a 16-mile trail uh, that will start at a north uh, uh, trailhead of NIPCO, uh, working its way south through Merrill, <coughs> Hinton, and then ultimately into Leeds. <coughs> Lamar's has already graciously uh, stated that they're going to uh, extend their trail down to NIPCO, uh, so an extra mile or so uh, to be able to meet up with the plywood. And then the city of Sioux City uh, has stated that they will build from their existing trail uh, up to Leeds to meet up with our South Trailhead. So um, we have 13 obstacles that we've identified that we're going to have to work through. Uh, there are certainly other challenges as well, uh, but we are working through each of those 13 obstacles. Uh, we believe that the cost of the trail is going to be roughly $10 million uh, to build. We're looking at potentially uh, splitting it into three different phases. Likely the first phase would uh, uh, build between uh, Merrill and Hitton. Uh, that'll be the easiest route at this point because we already have an agreement with IDOT uh, to build on the abandoned rail bed, uh, about six miles of, of that rail bed. Uh, so we have right away to build. Uh, the second phase would likely be building from Lamar's to Merrill. The third phase would be building from Hitton south to Leeds. 
uh, again, not, not an easy process, but again, we believe that uh, with the support not only of Lamar's, but the other municipalities, potentially the Plymouth County Board of Supervisors, that we can make this, make this work. So happy to entertain any questions that you all might have or any information that, uh, that you might need at this point. Any questions for Jeff? Uh, been a lot of excitement on it, Jeff. There is, yes. It's mentioned in here that um, we did a presentation to the Iowa DOT. How did that go? Um, it went well. So the commissioners were here uh, this summer. Um, Scott, as well as a couple of our executive members, presented to the Iowa DOT. They are very supportive. They've generally been very consistent in supporting trails throughout the state. Uh, so they are willing to work with us. Like I said, they've already given us a verbal uh, agreement that we would have right away on that abandoned trail uh, rail bed. Um, as they are looking at rebuilding 75, uh, we have some conversations in place to talk about how we may be able to tie into the to that work uh, with the trail. Um, you brought up three other. How to go with Plymouth County today? Because I honestly do not know. I, I purposely didn't go, but I. Um, I, we, we were in front of the uh, supervisors for about 45 minutes. I would say it was productive conversation. Uh, they expressed some concerns, uh, which we believe we're going to have to address in order to gain their full approval. I think they were clear in saying they do not oppose the trail. Uh, but they, they, their primary responsibility is to roads and bridges. They made that very clear uh, as we were presenting. But they are not opposed to the trail. Sure, um, and I don't mean to be doing all the talking by any means. Has Leeds, Hinton, and Merrill been approached as to contributing also? Because economically for Plymouth County, this is a no-brainer. Um, those would be stopping points for coffee, for, mm -hmm. for breaks. Uh, so I can't believe those towns wouldn't benefit. Have they been approached to they contribute? They have. So the, the first phase of our fundraising uh, was really directed more at the municipalities, and we received financial support from Lamar's, from Hinton, from Sioux City, from Sergeant Bluff. Uh, they funded most of the engineering study work that we've done at this point. Okay. All the municipalities have expressed support and interest in building this trail. My only concern, and I fully support this, but my only concern is um, ongoing maintenance is my biggest concern. How is that projected? How are we going to, or how is the group going to build an ongoing maintenance into this? So the intent is that as we are fundraising, we will set aside a certain amount of those funds, earmarked for an endowment that would be used for ongoing maintenance once the trail is built. And then is there any, this is my last one, <laughs> is, there, is, is there any plan on going north? No. That probably is not within the scope of this uh, project okay. at this point. Our intent is to build that, that uh, spine trail that would connect Lamar's to Sioux City and ultimately maybe connecting to the trails in Hillview as well, outside okay. of him. And then one of these grants is, is contingent on um, within Lamar's jurisdiction as far as our contribution. Our jurisdiction really reaches two miles farther than our boundary, correct? And that's I'm going to have to rely on Scott. <coughs> Primarily for uh, growth in terms of subdivisions, um, not, not a lot of additional. So we can't we can't supply that two miles that two mile barrier because it's our jurisdiction. I would think it would be eligible for us. Uh, we're still investigating what's called a linear park uh, concept, and a linear park would be where a um, government jurisdiction goes linearly away from their jurisdiction and create a park for whatever purpose. In this particular case, it might be a trail. Sure. However, we think there's some uh, power in having continuity of rules, regulations, uh, overall care and maintenance of this trail <coughs> by having one entity that would take care of it from Lamar's to Leeds. Yeah. And we, we did approach the <coughs> supervisors about potentially the <coughs> county conservation board as the potential maintenance owner going forward. Uh, I think there'll probably be much more dialogue before we finally get to a decision on how we're going to move forward. Absolutely. Right. When you uh, 
get a preliminary route plan, will you have a, a ability for the community to uh, meet and voice their opinion on it, similar to what the DOT does when they're? I, I believe so. Uh, we have laid out a general path right now, okay. knowing that we still have to speak with landowners, knowing we're still going to have to work through easements, right of ways, et cetera. Generally speaking, the way the path is laid out is we would probably start on the west side of 75 at NIPCO, work our way down, uh, probably to north of Merrill where the river cuts underneath 75, create a pedestrian uh, bridge probably underneath uh, the current uh, 75 structure, and then run the east side of 75, uh, probably connecting to the abandoned railway, abandoned, abandoned railroad bed, and then have to cut back across to under 75 going into Hitton, taking advantage of their trail system that already exists, and then continuing down the west side of 75 uh, to C80, and then finding a way to, to cross over C80, and then uh, likely following that frontage road into Leeds. So that's generally the path, uh, but there's still quite a bit more work to do sure. and more detailed discussions that we're going to have to have with those that are affected. What's your, what's your anticipated time? Well, I, I think that probably the next step work is probably going to be a year or so in terms of finalizing the path, getting in front of the communities uh, and the citizens uh, and landowners. I would think that 2018 uh, and it probably would be the back half of that year would be the earliest I would see any construction. Uh, and then our expectation is it could take, you know, three years to ultimately build, fully build, build this out. So it could well be into 2020 by the time we're done. I'd love to see it done earlier, but there's enough obstacles that I think it's going to take us some time. I make a motion officially supporting the plywood trail and st strongly encouraging all others affected by the trail route to support it as well. Is there a second? So moved. Motion remains second. Officially supporting the plywood trail, strongly encouraging all others affected by the trail route to support it as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Jeff, thanks so much for bringing us up to date on this. Just a side note, uh, John Winkle, you know, the mayor down there at Sergeant Bluff, uh, I was in a meeting with him down at the uh, state level uh, with the Iowa League of Municipalities, and he was one of the speakers, and he said uh, about this plywood trail down there, he says, uh, it's going to start in Sergeant Bluff, and before it's all over, it's going to end up in Mankato, Minnesota. He said, <laughs> but he says, I ain't going to be the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> His view is a little bit broader than mine. <laughs> so I get miles. Uh, you well, know, I John. Do, I do appreciate uh, the support, and, and again, thank you for all of all that you've done up to this point and what you will put forward. Thank you very kindly. I think it should be noted that it was five nothing, right? Oh yeah. We don't have many five nothing votes here. <laughs> so you should note that. I mean Scott Scott can agree with that, right? Yeah, right. I mean I think that no, should we're be duly noted. We're for it. Thank you. Thank Leslie, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, being in attendance on this topic and we appreciate your support. Well, I just, I sometimes okay. am the one too. I just thought that that Moving was important on to, to know. Going back to number one, the Floyd Valley Hospital audit. Um, uh, Damon and Company, did I say that right? Damon and Company? Uh, LLP will be the uh, council meeting for the, uh, pre pre to present the Lamar's Floyd Valley Hospital audit report for the year end of June 30th of 2016. I think a copy has been given to all of us, uh, and uh, anybody, oh, Daryl, yeah, yeah Daryl. betcha. Excuse me. Thank you. We had, uh, today we've got Jim Hinchin with, with us from Denman & Company. He was here this morning uh, and presented the audit report to our hospital board, and they, they approved it, so uh, we'll uh, let Jim come up. He promised to keep it brief this afternoon, so, but feel free to ask him any questions you've got, and we'd be happy to, to answer them. So, okay, thanks yeah. a lot, Daryl. <clears throat> Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, I'll just make a few brief comments. Uh, first of all, the, the opinion on the financial statements is an unmodified or a clean opinion, which means the statements are fairly stated in all material respects with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, as you know, uh, on the, uh, the statement of net position, what used to be the balance sheet, uh, you know, the biggest changes there are the property and equipment because the construction project uh, has increased, as, as has the long-term debt. 
and uh, in November, the details on the bulk of that debt will be finalized uh, with the banks. Uh, you probably also noted in the liability section last year we had picked up a liability uh, as most governmentals for the IPERS, the underfund, uh, the hospital share of the underfunded portion of IPERS. Um, and also, as you also probably noted, the, uh, in total the hospital and the foundation uh, had about approximately uh, $1.1 million uh, increase in their net position. Uh, and also, along with the USDA debt, there are certain compliance procedures that we need to uh, perform, and there were no issues uh, with those federal, what, what are called federal awards or federal expenditures. So we did not have any compliance issues as we did our testing with that. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. The contractual allowance of bad debts, is that consistent with other hospitals and is it continuing to grow up just because of all these rules and all, all the problems? With the third parties, uh, I don't know what portion of that because of the switch from on the, on the Title 19 or Medicaid to the uh, managed care organizations. I'm not quite sure uh, because that was in effect for the last three uh, months of the fiscal year. So there's no four people aren't paying or haven't paid for a little while. So. I, don't, I don't have the exact details of, of their adjustments, but you know, going forward, I guess Should everything needs to be seen. Are caught up sir? some going forward? Excuse are we catching up? Do we know? Yeah, are we catching up? Still struggling with that, but we're doing. Okay. Uh, I, it's uh, quite a struggle, and yeah. in fact, there are some agencies not able to pay their bills just because they're not able to get enough money right. from the four agencies. Is that a fair statement? We're paying our bills. Now. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't mean that some was, was including you in that group. But it's just that that became a kind of a bugaboo for quite a few groups during this time, right? Exactly. The net pension liability, how does that go up a million and a half bucks in one year? Well, it depends on, I mean, it's an actuarial uh, right? computation. Uh, it's based on uh, the hospital's salaries. And right. they, they didn't, did increase. And actually, it's based on, this This is based on June 30, 2015 information. Because that's the, that's the most current information available for others. <coughs> okay. So, so they did have an increase so in salaries. So they're getting that under control right. in, in, your, in your, my humble opinion. Right. Okay. Any other questions for uh, hospital reports? Looks good. If not, thank you. Make, make a motion to accept the Floyd Valley Hospital Report, June 30th, 2016. Judge second. So moved. Motion made and second, accepting the Floyd Valley Hospital Audit Report for the year ended June 30th, 2016. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you very thank much you. for thank the you. report and Mike and, and uh, Daryl uh, sharing with us. Uh, By the way, your your open houses have been very uh, very attractive. They, 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 the people have done a good job out there, and, and uh, everybody almost nearly close to done. Everybody seems <laughs> almost <laughs> nearly. Everybody <laughs> close to done. What, what does that mean? <laughs> Does that mean you still got to walk three blocks to get in the door? <laughs> Mike is still parking along six. I, I, yeah. I noticed the vehicle the other day. Over there. <laughs> okay. But it does look nicer. That cement looks a whole lot nicer. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, moving along to uh, number three, the comprehensive plan land use. Uh, uh, six uh, comprehensive plan community input sessions led by Simcoe have been held from April through October. The most recent success session was to discuss land use on October 4th on 2016. The upcoming schedule uh, is anticipated as follows. The PNZ or Planning and Zoning Commission land use is October 25th, 2016, 415. The Board of Zoning Adjustment land use is November 1st, 2016 at 8.15 a.m. And the City Council Public Hearing Land Use is November 1st, 2016 uh, at 12 p.m. Purpose of this is the administration recommends the Council establish a public hearing on November 1st, 2016. And Scott, you want to share with us uh, a little bit about what's possessing this? 
Well, as you all know, we, you have um, initiated a number of incentives to spur housing. Um, we've gotten a fair amount of activity as a result of that. Dogwood addition is going in. Uh, you approved the work at Crescent Ridge. Uh, we're soon to uh, maybe see construction uh, in the uh, Lamar's Business Park with a uh, multi-family unit. And uh, the reason I think uh, land use is so, should be so paramount right now is that we identify um, the undeveloped areas of Lamar's, and if you look at the uh, zoning map, that is not necessarily land use, that's zoning. However, that's also then couples into land use. If you see that brownish tone, that's rural. And the significance of these three meetings plus the previous meeting is um, to get as much input from <coughs> all of you from the community at large so that we tell ourselves where should single family be, where should duplexes be, where should townhouses be, and, more, and probably the most important, where should multifamily units be located. So I think it's very, very vital that we all put our minds together in the short term here and get that decided so that the comp plan that we're asking Simcoe to finalize gets as accurate as possible that in the fall of 2016, this is where the community at large, the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Board of Zoning Adjustment, the City Council, where everybody thought this stuff should be. And that way, if we get John Doe, Susie Smith, or Ralphie coming into our door saying, I want to build a 30-plex, and we locate it right next to your house because we decided as a community that's where it should go, that we don't have a lot of controversy. That's I know, yeah, I know at the Simcoe meeting we said the public had an opportunity to provide input, but obviously the public was not totally represented. What is going to be the most expedient way, do you think, to, for, that, for us to get more public input? Well, that's why we got what we've got here, is we thought, well, one meeting, really? I mean, if you were on vacation at a, at a game, at a kid's event, and that was on a Tuesday night at 5.15 and I couldn't make it, you know, so we're trying to get a variety of dates and times. <laughs> so we got a 4.15 in the afternoon, a 8.15 in the morning and a noon meeting that you would still have the opportunity to come in and express your opinion. Encourage, strongly encourage public attendance of one of those meetings. Yes, and then yeah. beyond that they can always uh, email or drop a note to City Hall um, they could get us their information just by a number of ways. They can call my cell phone. I had, really want this as accurate as possible. And we've had six of them on different topics at this point. Right. You know, but, but we're really trying to get the public involved or the citizens involved in what, what their thoughts are going down the road. And right. this one is a big deal with the land use. I mean, that's oh, really important. Huge. Whatever. The huge. public's all on board. Is in, a, in a way, we're doing something that's uh, very, very safe in terms of that first 30-plex being in the Lamar's Business Park. And so it is completely within the permissive uses of the, co of the zoning code mm -hmm. to put it in a, a B2 area. And so it's really safe to do that. But if you look at those brown areas on the east, southeast, and south, there might be some areas in there that you, you or others may say, that really should not be multifamily. Or it really shouldn't be fourplexes. Now in the case of Dogwood, just to remind you, uh, they did have one area that was zoned R1A, and that allows from a single family to a fourplex. And it's going to be along the east side of 4th Avenue Extended South. <coughs> just so you know. Uh, just immediately north of there, it's all single family. Now, how, how does that affect, like, in, in the past, just, I'm just going to name some, 
I know they're not even named this anymore, Saxony Apartments went in, Eastridge went in. If um, we have a land use deal, and this is strictly for my curiosity, but I'm a, a developer or an investor, and I pick up three lots somewhere in the southeast, you know, southeast quadrant of town, and I, it's enough for a four fourplex or a sixplex. I'm still. Would I be allowed, or would I need a, a zoning uh, change to get to put up a you know a six pack a how a apartment in that area? Well, it all depends on what the current zoning is. If the current zoning is R1, uh, you're gonna you can't do it without rezoning or a variance. Or, or not? Or. Um, no, multiplexes are not allowed even as a conditional use in an R1 district. Okay. okay. Uh, a duplex is as a conditional use. Right. But a multiplex like a 30plex is not. What I, what I would And have he, here's the problem is I've, I've been um, conversing this whole housing issue with folks as far away as uh, Sioux Falls, Orange City, um, Sioux Center, Des Moines, Lincoln, Nebraska, and one of the first things they will ask me is, do you have a place to put it? Already zoned appropriately. Nothing will scare a developer away quicker than if they have to walk into a strange city, that being Lamar's, where they haven't been before, and propose something that might be controversial to the neighbors. They don't like it. M many times they will just turn around conversation-wise and not talk to me. <laughs> I, it gets that bad. Peter, you're right. And so right. All, I'm asking for some pre-planning now and de let's determine it. We're all educated people. Let's determine what we want, where we want it. So when I'm talking to the John Doe, Susie Smith, or Ralph Cafe from out of town, I can answer that question legitimately. Yes, you're proposing a 15-plex, and I can show you a site that's already zoned for it. No, I get what we're I mean, yeah, I get it. And with all the meetings, <coughs> no one, after, you know, after this, if this is totally approved at the end of all the readings, no one can step up the microphone and say we weren't given a chance. That's true. I mean, they can fight and they can argue all they want. But the bottom line is they've been given multiple opportunities to get in on it at this level, mm -hmm. which I think is very, very good. N not to bring up a sore subject, but I mean that zoning, uh, or the rezoning issue that we just recently went through is, uh, is a classic case, really. It, it's, it's much nicer to have those decisions made uh, up front and prior before the proposition is right before you. So, so, so are you planning to be able to present 10, 12 sites that says 400 to 600, 24th Street, blah, blah, blah. What's, I mean, so, so that we can give that list to the paper, to, you know, newspaper, whatever, and print it, so that people aren't trying to look at the brown on a map and try to figure out where the heck they are on the brown. Where they live. If we yeah. as a community with all the different groups say that this is sacred to single family, then the R should go to R1. We're saying that at the end of the comp plan, right. we get it in final form and you ratify it. Our very next step is going to be to go through the PMZ to get to you, the council, and decide what to change all the brown on here to what color. So it's a done deal. And then if I'm talking to the investment group in Sioux Falls, I can say, you want to build a 15-plex? The only place that this city will allow it is right there. Mm -hmm. We won't allow it right here. And at the last circle meeting, or the, this comprehensive plan meeting for input, that's where we, we basically laid out areas that we thought where we would expect to be R1, industrial, whatever, yes. uh, multifamily. Yeah, and it doesn't only, I, I keep bringing up the brown, and that's probably a little bit of a misnomer on my part. 
you could say uh, that which is already zoned R1, but it's still a, an agricultural field, right. you might want to say, well, that really belongs in R2. That's, that's what I'm asking. I'm just, yeah. so, somebody's got to make a list of not just two two items. Stretch my neck. Well, I know, and, and you'll have twenty. By the highest tree, and I'm going to do that for you. Well, if you did, give me once, twenty. Once we get all the input, I'm going to cut, come up with a map, and I'm going to say this is what I think after going through all these meetings. Right. So, so let's say that you have twenty locales. After these three meetings, we might have fifteen, but then we'll have fifteen that have gone and been. Uh, you know, the new word is vetted, that, hey, this is okay, you can put it in those places. Right. So, but I think, you know, you go, you go, the newspaper puts that map in the paper, and they, they, nobody knows what that means. They, 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 they really don't, they don't care about that. I'll take any suggestions you, see, you have, I just, how do we get that word out? I, I think you actually got to give an address. I think you got to give a street address. I think, I mean, so that somebody can say, I'm on 18th, and, and they ain't got 18th in the paper. I better look at that. Because I don't know, I mean. Well, first of all, you get a map that size, you really have a hard time identifying the, even the main arteries, let alone well, where you are the, on it. But I'm saying, that, and they're not looking that their neighbor's going to be multifamily when they're looking at that map. They're, they're not even putting the two articles together. But we've got to somehow give them a specific list of items, I believe. We've got to share the list with realtors so that you know if they know there's issues already or John's here that they may bet and come back to us and say you better approach that because I think John's Rexwinkle's comment is most valid is that this is not this is not going to get done on the first it, it, it's going to get it's going to have a public hearing on the first but we're going to get done with it in 2016 I'll say that but the thing is, we're going to have to go through some of these questions on a few of these issues. And we're not going to do them one by one. That's not a, that, that takes two years. Hey, it was also that all of you know what Simcoe staff is thinking. <coughs> um, it, they would like, you know, the six meetings that we've already had, and they would like any and all input into what, into the comp plan so they can do the final draft. And they would like the final draft prepared in November and presented to you, at least maybe in preliminary form, some of the sections yep. by sometime in December, That's fine. and with a kind of a, an overall draft in January. So no, it, it don't have to be finalized on November 1st, but it, it, you know how we all live. No, it Unless must. there's a date out there. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and if you come in on the first without a list of addresses or places or a map, nobody's going to push you on it either. The only reason we're getting pushed is we, the whole time I've been sitting here, we don't have no apartments been built in this whole time. The me whole, and you, me and you both. 25, 26 years. And there's one exception and that's in the, in the southwest corner of uh, countryside estates there by 6th and 18th. Mm -hmm. And those were three, four places. Yes. Three, four plexes, I believe. The, the other thing, we've got a shortage of housing, and I say affordable housing, yep. in this town that we've been talking about for two years or three years. And we're to the point now where we've got people looking at us as far as developers. Am I right, Scott? Yep. And so we got to get ready. we got to be ready. We better, and we'll be prepared when they come to town. Well, you did put your best foot forward a very good foot forward when you passed on those incentives. So yep. That yep. has yep. allowed me to call people and they, oh, you did? You there did. was some talk they about want some um, annexation in this. Is, is that part of this or has that been dropped or is that being thought of voluntary vote? Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. In addition to taking any of these colors and turning them to a different color, now let's talk, you're bringing up taking what's in the white but adjacent. And uh, the last time we did any uh, an annexation was 1997. Uh, Judge Neary was our city attorney. Yeah. And uh, we wrestled with that, didn't we? Yeah, it was, took us a while. There was <laughs> seven, seven, 800, 900 acres 
that we were trying to take in, and we were trying to do it voluntarily. And so, very, very good question. Do we want a further annexation anywhere here? and turn some of the white to some color. What does yeah. that involve? What all does that involve? Uh, well, you can either do it voluntary or involuntary. If it's voluntary, it involves going out and asking the, the Steele family that owns this 40, uh, would you voluntarily annex? If they say no, your only other choice is involuntary, and I don't even know that procedure we, we, because we, we've we, never done it in We, we chose not to do the involuntary. What's the plus side to them? Or, or, you know, if, if they get annexed in, do their taxes go up or do they stay the same? Or what? A what egg for ag stays basically right. consistent, but if there's any improvement on the land, taxes go up. And I think in that meeting also, we discussed, we talked generally in directions like southwest, but possibly industrial, southeast, residential. Uh, uh, your residential. past comp plan, so I assume your current yeah. comp plan. We'll say 6th, 6th Avenue, also known as Links, all the way down to the west will be industrial. So this, this brown probably should turn the blue, sky blue. Yeah. And general direction south into the unannexed areas also. Yes, yeah, so all this down here. But it doesn't have to be. Right. So when we annex, we're not actually purchasing that property, right? No, no. Okay, so no, but even ex even explaining it to them was quite a job. Huh? Even explaining it to each of those people was quite a job. Then they believed the city was going to do something to them. And then we said we weren't going to do something to them. We took Jeff out there and told him he wasn't going to do something to them. And they still didn't believe us. And the Steele family at the time was in Arizona, I believe. So it made the you know conversation quite, quite difficult on top of it. Right. So, but yes. As you can tell by this map, the Steele family previously said no. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's still white. So they benefit, they benefit by having city services, which then also can decrease insurance premiums. Because then you get the city fire rating compared to a rural rating. So there is some pros to it as well. Right. And then and oh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, there is a fire agent right on the edge of their property. Yeah. <laughs> so right across the street. But that's, but that's neither here nor there. The obvious first thing we got to do is we got to get this list approved on where multi multiplexes could build. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we can expand some of those lines. But that that process, I think we spent two years on and off. It was a lengthy period. It was a long time, wasn't it, Bev? Just so awful. That, no, that, that, that's not the word I wanted to use. Not awful. She said awful. But, but there was a lot of pages. A lot of signature pages. A lot of uh, notices. A lot of certified mail notices. Return receipt notices. There was a lot of paperwork. Is that a fair way of saying yeah. And a number of these browns uh, crossed here and on up this way. Uh, even some of this stuff, that was not city limits at that time. No. It was the 1997 effort that took us to a corp line that's out here now. Because otherwise it was just as jagged as the south side is. How will we introduce the McClure plans on the bypass? How will that be introduced in this process? Uh, that's, that's part of the process. Okay. And I do want to explain the zoning map is the zoning map. That's the way you or a previous council decided the zone should be. Uh, in the comprehensive plan, the land use can change uh, upon every update to the complex. And that's just uh, a plan. It's an idea that that's what you think you want for that area. And the comp plan can show what you think you want out here on this white. Uh, it can show up in the complex. Even if it's not been done. Yes. But you have no authority to do that. To zone it out there when it's outside the corporate limits. Compliance an idea. And as the mayor said, we've got a lot of developers interested in potentially doing something in right. Mars. They need to have some assurances they're not gonna have to deal with zoning issues and that type of thing. They're gonna know exactly where they can go to build. Okay. We don't want to do any other questions. Issues. Not I entertain a motion. 
Association down in Middle East. Motion established in November 1, 2016 at 12 p.m. is public hearing on the land used for inclusion in the comprehensive plan. Second. Motion made and second established November 1, 2016 at 12 p.m. for public hearing on land use <coughs> for inclusion in the comprehensive plan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks for the explanation on that, Scott. Moving on to number four. Under the action items, airport zoning ordinance. Under separate submittal, Council and Planning and Zoning Commission have received the revised airport zoning ordinance. Originally, said ordinance was co coordinated by CIPCO and drafted by Bolton and Mink engineers to meet the current standards of the Federal Aviation Administration. Don Kimmel from CIPCO was here today uh, so if you have any questions, uh, uh, which you'll certainly be able to help it. Um, the administration, the Simco, and the Bolton Mink all recommend the City Council establish a public hearing on November 1st, 2016. The Planning and Zoning will meet on October 25th, 2016, and have their recommendation available for said public hearing. Uh, so if anybody's, yes, Dawn, would you like yes, to? Yes, I'm here if you have questions. If you have any questions regarding this ordinance, uh, Dawn has been involved with it along with Bolt and Make, right? Yep, I took it on in April or May. I believe so, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I found it very complex. So I, I think public hearing would be interesting if, if we could get down into a smaller version of what we're trying to accomplish. Because uh, it, it just reads like a legal document instead of something that we'd be able to absorb and same with the public. So we need to talk in their regular language. I can have some descriptions prepared that are plain language to yeah. explain the process and why it's necessary. Because I wouldn't, after reading that, I wouldn't even know what questions to ask. <laughs> It's like reading the hospital about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That's, I mean, why you, that's why you voted for it. Pretty much like your whole code book. You know, it's meant to confuse you so you don't ask too many questions. So, yeah, I can, um, I can break it down for... Like, um, Bolton Mink had had the public hearings already, but the time frame in which it should have been completed for the whole process expired, so we're just going to readdress and reintroduce and complete it this year, so... A uh, short version to that is that we need to, you already have an airport zoning ordinance. Uh, and I, didn't, I probably will err, but I think it was probably dates back to the 70s. It's old. It's super old. And there's nothing uh, bad necessarily with the age of it other than nomenclature has changed. Um, certainly a number of the um, abbreviations don't make sense no more. <laughs> they've, they've changed a lot of that terminology. And so what this document is, is attempting to do is bring it up to date completely because we've gone through at least four decades mm -hmm. uh, since we've really done a wholesale <coughs> bringing it up to date <coughs> and so and it's being required of us by F FAA and so if we want to continue to be part of the FAA program and that includes their funding mechanism uh, we really need to bring this up to date and make sure that it fits uh, how they deem things some of the simple things are just line references that refer to federal codes those numbers don't exist anymore so we have to make sure that whatever phrasing matches with the current federal language. To put an analogy out there, because I think many of you were on the council when we updated our full code of ordinance, and if you recall, we hired the firm to go through and do a, a cross-reference between state statute and our ordinance, because as you, as you mature with your ordinance, the state is constantly changing law, and we got to make sure that our ordinance is in sync with those changes. Kind of the same thing here. As the FAA has changed some of their procedures, policy, and nomenclature, we haven't changed with it. So. 
Any other questions for Doug? Motion establishes November 1st, 2016 at 12 p.m. for a public hearing on the airport zoning ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second, establishing November 1st, 2016 at 12 p.m. for a public hearing on the airport zoning ordinance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Don. Thanks a lot, uh, Don, for your, your support and help in this project. Give Bill our love. Yeah. <laughs> did you hear that? I did not. Give, Bill, that? Give Bill, Bill our love. Oh, sure. <laughs> 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 we'll take care of him. Yeah. Thank you. Tell him we're still thinking about him. <laughs> okay. He's not sure you need to be here at 12 if we're going to have the other one at 12. It can be at 12.30 and it'll be early enough. Yeah, yeah that's true. Okay, <laughs> moving on to uh, uh, number five, the building and construction and fire code regulations. At its October 4th, 2016 meeting, the council held a public hearing on proposed amendments to chapter 155, which is the building and construction and chapter 156, which is a fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's code of ordinances. The administration and the fire and code departments recommend uh, council proceed with the second reading of the ordinance. Any questions on that? Can somebody tell us what these changes are? Um, I, I, I read through them. They're really quite vague, vague but number three. Number three. Provision of the international. Mechanical code? Yeah, I'm just curious what it is. Uh, that pertains to your, um, such as your permits and air conditioning. But not radon? Uh, no. There is? Because it says provide, um, I mean, okay, that's fine if, if it's not. Mechanical systems that are permanently installed and utilized to provide environmental conditions and related processes within the building. I mean, if you want to see the entire list of amendments, um, I can surely bring them to you. Uh, they, the state doesn't always adopt every paragraph or every sentence of the building code. They okay. will basically fit it to, this is what we want as a state, and they can do that. So they'll take some amendments out, or take some paragraphs out or sentences out and amend those that they no longer exist. So when I go back to review the building code, if somebody has a question, I'll first have to make sure that it's not, uh, that it's still in our code um, as how the state adopted it to make sure it was one of the amendments. All right. So I mean, it's just, most of the amendments are minor changes um, okay. uh, that haven't been adopted. And I know we talked about it briefly at the last um, meeting, the radon, and now we're getting pushing for um, well, I'd like to at least explore that. Locally, local, um, local uh, building codes, which we can adopt. Sure. The appendix that so you don't make it any more stringent. I mean, we're just right. adopting exactly what the state adopts. So if the state right. inspectors come in here, we're using the same thing that they're using. Exactly. Whatever other city and stuff like that. But other cities have it all more stringent. I mean, there's things in there even with fire code, like if you want all new homes to be sprinkled, right? You can do it. But the state said, we're not going to do that. But no. some cities have done it. Right. They all, West Des Moines, so many square foot home, you're going to sprinkle it now. I mean, right. there's different options for you, fire, in those amendments. So if you want to pick the radon amendment out and say, as city of the large, we should be installing this stuff, you can add that to your at least the At least in new construction through the roof. I don't care if they don't even put the system in, but it's stuff we're going to face down the road in selling houses, period. And if it's, if it's put in new construction, it's cheap at the time. I just sold a brand new house and I insisted that my buyer make yeah, that plumbing so in the roof the and they did. They haven't got the system put in but they got it through the roof. Right. Right. I think that some of the reason the state doesn't adopt all of those things is the pressure from the home builders. So Absol absolutely. It's just what I was going to say. Because the even... Cost money. Radon systems cost money. It already cost enough to build a home in this state. When you go to those meetings and listen to the home builders oh, yeah. get up and say their piece. Right. Safety sometimes goes out the window and it's all about the bottom dollar. Sure. And, you know, and the state did not adopt the appendix pertaining to radon uh, just because of what Dave said. 
You know, homeowner, homeowners that are building are looking at the bottom line and where we can cut costs to stay within our budget, right. which you'll never stay within your budget. Right. Um, um, <laughs> and if, if you follow the code, the appendix, as it's written, there's a lot more to it than uh, just putting in a pipe into the ground and a fan to suck up. There, is, there really is a lot more to it. Absolutely. And, I mean, you've got you've to have um, a specific granular material under your concrete floor. In an active system, Greg, but today if you buy my house and you say, I want radon put in, right. I'm not going to tear up my basement floor and do it right. I'm going to put in the passive system that does 90% of the work. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah, 1200 bucks. 1300 okay. But if you're, if you're building a house and you say, just put the pipe through the roof, it literally will cost you less than a few hundred dollars, and boom, the pipe is there. <coughs> I, what, what anybody does with it is their business. I absolutely agree with you on that, but um, you know, then we're starting to pick apart um, very specific areas within the radon code. You know, because if all we're going to require is somebody take a pipe and drop it into their sump pump hole, and that's going to suffice, whether it's new construction or not, um, if that's going to suffice. Yeah, we could actually do that, but are we defeating the purpose of a true um, radon mitigation system when it's done incorrectly? You know, because then we, we truly, even in the new home construction, if all we're going to require is to drop that three-inch pipe through the concrete or into their sump pump hole and vent out the gases to the outside, then we are really picking apart about one or two sentences of the entire appendix of the building code. And are we doing it correctly um, by telling people that's all you have to do when here's two or three pages pertaining to doing the radon properly? Right. Which is a lot more involved than dropping a pipe. Oh, in the absolutely, it's a lot so, more. It's a lot more expensive too. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. Because then you're talking granular, the specific granular material underneath your basement. Oh yeah. Very specific mm -hmm. um, layout, drainage. Know. How would you say um, drainage to be able to get all the gases out from underneath yeah. your basement? Yeah. Um, you've got to put a um, sealed, for lack of a better term, but a sealed layer over top of that concrete, or on top of that granular material, and then you pour your concrete on top of that. Bring it all to a general location. So my, my thought process, if, if we're going to adopt a radon code, then we should adopt what's proper and how it's written and not pick out one or two sentences sure. and say, hey, you've got to put a three-inch pipe. Sense. Maybe that yeah. honestly makes more sense because I am not in favor of forcing contractors or builders to put in a $5,000 system. Right. Not. But what I'm looking at is the invasiveness of a passive system that, or an aftermarket system right. or an afterthought system. Right. The simplicity of, put, of putting part of that system in and saying, you're just required to do that. Yep. Did that your yeah. question, sir? Uh, yeah, good. No, okay, no. good. Thanks, Greg. Okay, any other questions? <coughs> I'd entertain a motion. Motion approving the second reading of ordinance number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations, and chapter 156, fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's code of ordinances. There a second? So moved. Motion made and second, approving the second reading of the ordinance of number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations, and chapter 156 of the fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's code of ordinances. Do we have a roll call on that, Beth? Knapp? Yes. Wick? Yes. Goodchild? Yes. Rexwinkle? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Motion carried. Motion waiving the third reading of ordinance number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations, and chapter 156, fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's code of ordinances. Is there a second? So moved. Motion made and second, waiving a third reading of the ordinance of number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations, and chapter 156. Fire Prevention Code of the City of Lamar's Code of Ordinances. Can we have a roll call on that, Bill? Now? Yep. Wick? Yes. Good child? No. Rexwinkle? Yes. Nelson? Yes. 
Motion carried. <clears throat> Adopting ordinance number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations and chapter 156, fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's of code of ordinances on its second reading. Second. Motion made second, adopting the ordinance of number 927, amending chapter 155, building and construction regulations, chapter 156, fire prevention code of the city of Lamar's code of ordinances on its second reading. We have a roll call on that, Bill? No. Yes. Wick? Yes. Good child? Yes. Rex Lingo? Yes. No. Yes. Why does it order by that time? Motion carried. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, number six, uh, the approval, public improvements to the KNS second edition. The KNS second edition is requesting council consideration of acceptance of the public improvements. Number one, the engineer's certificate of completion, and that will be issued by the city engineer. Number two is a final inspection it was conducted on July 26, 2016 and minor punch list items need to be taken care of yet. And number three is a set of as-built drawings has been created by PSS Incorporated. And number four is a resident inspection throughout the construction has been conducted by city departments as applicable to their respective department. The city engineer's recommendation is to accept the public improvements <coughs> subject to any or all uncompleted item or requirements. Scott, you want to give us an update on that? Uh, very, very minor items. I think it's changing out a couple of uh, ring and covers at this point. Uh, all the other uh, punch list items, I believe, are taken care of. So yes, I would recommend your approval, and we'll, we'll see to it that uh, the balance of it gets accomplished. Uh, the significance of your approval is so that uh, occupancy permits can be issued. Uh, four homes were under construction. I think uh, two are being lived in. Make a motion accepting the public improvement for the KNS second edition subject to all uncompleted closeout items. Is there a second? So moved. Motion made second accepting the public improvements for all KNS second edition subject to all uncompleted closeout items. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, discussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we budget in a clock? We put new batteries in it last night. It's in the fix it corner. I tried it again this morning and it's. <laughs> That's a National Historic Preservation Clock. So we've got, got to be careful what we do with that. I think it needs some new valves. Actually, there is one item that I'd like to bring up. Um, I got a couple calls just from buy people it. who. Get a little bit upset with their neighbors blowing leaves into the street and I know that is against our code so I would like to publicly maybe even get the paper or somebody to say something about it but that's not really acceptable not only is it really rude to your neighbors but it it just causes the city the storm sewer system a lot more problems so take care of your darn yard waste and um, if not I would seriously encourage warnings on complaints and follow-ups with fines because I think it's pretty unacceptable practice. And I had a couple calls, so I'd like to really push for that. So, and I'll definitely look into it. Um, I oh, did take leaves in ground. right, and I did take a look at uh, one property that I got a complaint on. Um, today's Tuesday; it must have been yesterday. Uh, which the leaves were no longer in the street. And what I have seen people do, especially when I was um, working in the other office, the other department where I hit a lot of streets on a daily basis, this time of the year, a lot of times people will blow the leaves into the street to gather them, there. To gather them up because yes. it's easier to clean them up off of a nice smooth concrete Absolutely. surface as compared to trying to get them off the ground. So, and I think a lot of people see that when they drive by, so they immediately call in, so-and-so is blowing their leaves in the street, and when I was working for the police department, you run up there and take a look, and there's no leaves sure. in the street. Absolutely. Because they're cleaning them up. So, you know, so some of it, some of it is very much legitimate, um, some, but some of it might be um, uh, one person's, you know, yeah. getting ahead of themselves a little sure. bit. So. absolutely. Just so I bring it okay. up. Absolutely. Thanks, you can't burn them either. 
You cannot. You cannot burn them in a fire pit. No. 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 Burning leaves at all. I was you. kidding, Shipper. I was. <laughs> Especially if you live in a third ward, it won't happen. Any other questions? <laughs> oh, good. See? No. Rex? Yeah, they, they throw this stuff in our council package, and I want to make sure that people understand that we do read it. There's a safety committee minutes here, and it says the member was absent was Bakura, but yet he signed all the minutes. What? <laughs> I wrote the minutes. Let me see. How, how does he write the minutes when he's absent? Let me look. Oh, who was absent? Oh, great. <laughs> You can't be, be absent and sign the minutes. Great. I'm sorry. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's, 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 I, had, I had a lot of some of them, but that's, that, didn't, uh, he didn't proofread it. That, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a Robert's <laughs> Rules of Order default right there. I'll change that. That's all I got. I'm not even going to write that down. <laughs> 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 I'd like to say, you've got to watch that city administrator, the uh, assistant city administrator. <laughs> I can't, I can't top that. <laughs> okay, uh, Greg, I want to uh, call on you in regard to this building permit report. Uh, just to give them an update on what we're doing in regard to new homes and things like that. So take a few minutes. Yep, just a quick update. Not going to take up a lot of the time. Scott had actually asked me to do this at the last meeting, but we got out of here too quick and I didn't get to it, so I figured we'll better hit it up today. Um, obviously, building permits and stuff are uh, slowing down. We're getting late in the season, so you know, new home construction and additions and those kind of things are really going to start slowing down here in the next couple of months. Uh, but anyway, for last month, and I'll, I'll give you an overview as to how we compare uh, to last year's statistics also. But this past month, we gave out two new family dwelling, single family dwellings homes for $2,500 in revenue to the city from. Uh, Building permits and a $444,000 um, uh, valuation of the structures, giving us 20 for the entire year. Entire year, a $25,000 in revenue, and four, just about four and a half million dollars uh, in assessed valuation. Uh, basically, just one small addition um, to a single-family dwelling, um, valued at about $20,000, um, 11 for the year at. Uh, 268,000. Um, basically, and I'll kind of skip down to the bottom. Some a lot of the accessory buildings uh, would be utility sheds or uh, garages, those kind of things. Uh, bringing, giving a valuation for the month of uh, 36,000 and 438 dollars in revenue. But here's what's kind of really, I guess, interesting. If you kind of look at the year to date, and I know you don't have last year's sheet in front of you. Um, the year to date, so far this year, we're at four and a half million dollars in valuation. Last year, we were at about five and a half million. So we're a little bit behind. And I'm not sure if we're going to catch last year's. But the bottom number at the totals, um, last or see, last year we issued 122 uh, different permits. Right now, uh, we are at 89. Our numbers from last year, our total income in permit revenue was 70,000, and we are currently uh, at the end of September at 72, almost $73,000. So our revenue has already increased, even though our numbers aren't there yet as far as actual number of permits issued. And last year, our total of valuation of structures, this is everything from new homes, commercial, signage, fences, the whole works. Um, last year's, we were sh just short of 15 and a half million. We're at 15,395 actually. And this year, we are just about uh, uh, 17 million. So we have already increased our valuation uh, through the month of, sem of September uh, as compared to the entire year last year. So um, our no permit numbers are down, but our uh, assessed valuation numbers are up and our uh, uh, revenue is up. So, okay. any questions on that? Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Uh, Scott. Uh, just the 75 water uh, continues to move slowly, but 
from Highway 3 South is inching closer to being completed. I think they have uh, one driveway and one sidewalk to pour in order to attain that, and then they also need to pull out the, the not so good soil and put in topsoil to get it prepared for seed. Um, and that portion then will be done. Um, I have asked Pat Bickett with uh, Slowfield Engineering to give, uh, get a meeting scheduled with uh, Vanderpool in which to uh, really ask the uh, pretty critical question. If we're not going to get any more uh, crew members here in Lamar's working daily, every day, all day, then I don't feel we should pull the trigger from Highway 3 North. How do you feel? Well, one question I have on that is this. How is that going to affect black topping or white topping or overcoating the project we want to take on? I agree that they should not go north. Uh, they just have proven that they can. Well, the white, white topping stop starts at the south end of return uh, on the south side of the intersection. As of now, but we've talked about going farther, right? So, no, that would that would that's have to be state. the state. That's the state. It's going to stop. Yeah, it wouldn't be a city side, side, so it's not going to screw up our city. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that won't screw up our, our going ahead with a new surface on 75 if they do or don't do it this year. Uh, correct. There will okay. be no net effect to the city project. I don't think you can open up any more right away in no. the end of October. That's not with that's their, just, that's just that. that's how I feel, but I wanted to get you guys' yeah. uh, not with their record. Now, with the issues we've had going south, if we, when we do do the water main going north, uh, what kind of liabilities do we have with the state if there's issues? Uh, Since it's their road. It's their road, so we have to repair anything damaged is all. Can we contact them and, and get them behind the contractor? So they don't get their April one and do it, and contract to tear it up first of June. At least let them know that uh, the project is uh, still there. Absolutely, I'd be I'd be willing to coordinate what we need to do with what they are proposing to do uh, with a district three office. So that could be done. Good. I think that's a good idea. Uh, so again, uh, I'm going to be having a meeting uh, with Vanderpool and. Uh, if, depending on what I hear, you know, their situation may have changed, but I kind of doubt it, so. It doesn't look like it. They're, uh, they're doing the city alley going into Casey's. I think they're gonna pave today. And they're even gonna repair my sidewalk today. And uh, so, and the sidewalk that goes across the highway's gotta come in, but they're getting, they're getting closer. Oh, their, yeah. smack, their smack crew's there, so. Yeah. And then uh, we did, uh, I mentioned previously that we hired Barkley on some additional asphalt, part of which is to um, create a small, probably four foot wide taper off of that uh, uh, inch and a half lip that we have along there since we put the curb and gutter in. And uh, so Barkley's in town. Uh, today, all they're gonna be working on is uh, milling. And so they have hired a subcontractor that's got a bigger mill and um, had to do some work apparently out at uh, Holiday Inn Express. And then they're gonna be working on parts of uh, Business Highway 75 from Bob's down to Godfather's first. Uh, they might jump over on uh, 9th and Central to take care of some of the problems in that intersection as far as milling. And then Barclays will stay around to do more milling with their smaller equipment and also then putting the patches back in. So the public understands anywhere we're seeing some white paint on the blacktop streets is where we're gonna do some repair work. Uh, as stated, uh, we're gonna mill it out. It's called mill and fill. So we're gonna mill out an inch and a half and put an inch and a half right back in it. But we're gonna put it with hot mix instead of cold mix and cold, uh, hot mix it lasts a lot longer. <coughs> we're hopeful that we can get through the winter, put it that way. So uh, Barclays are in town uh, doing that work. Uh, so that's an update. Um, Crescent Ridge uh, mobilized yesterday as Holstein from Minnesota. 
mobilized yesterday and got started this morning. Uh, so, uh, as they promised. Yeah, equipment's on site and they're moving. So that's a good thing. Uh, yes, so um, they have a very aggressive schedule and time will tell if they can achieve that, but they have every uh, intention of moving <coughs> through that project very quickly. That's water, sewer, and storm, right? Yes. And we're going to be. If they do good work, can we, we're, we're, we're going to keep them on the list, aren't we? <laughs> well, can we get out oh, yeah. of. Hey, can we get out of Highway 3 North? No. Just really out of poor performance and then switch and say to this outfit that's showing that they're going to do what they're going to do. Do you want to meet on that, Joe? <laughs> well, but I mean, well, you, you got to show that. Uh, well, yeah, but how many days are they behind on 75? So what I'm saying is if you have an outfit that's aggressive and willing to come in and actually do the work, Come on. They were supposed we have to have yeah, 100 percent done in July. Act of Congress. Say. All right, <laughs> fine. I, sorry I asked. I, I'm glad you asked because it, it needs to be said. But on the same token, we've got the, all these stupid government rules that we have to follow. If we've awarded a contract, we can't rescind it. We, it, it would take a legal process. Yeah. You'd have to show okay, there. So, it's, so, it's not, so it's not worth going through that. <coughs> but that doesn't mean that these people aren't going to be on the list for the next job. Right, just absolutely. like my buddies Harris is on the mm -hmm. job list every time, too. Because they don't want to lay concrete. And it looks like Johnny Mac's laying great concrete down the street. So, I mean, we're, we maybe got some good people. Uh, RP Constructors, uh, which was the first time for them. Uh, they were awarded the um, water, sewer, and storm on Dogwood, yeah. and fully performed. Yeah, done, done deal. <coughs> and, and according to our rules, right, the time frame and stuff, within a couple of days, I think, or something like that, right? Yeah, they had rain to deal with. Yeah, uh, they had mud. To they had mud. Yeah, they had swimming pools. They had pools. <laughs> I agree with that. But I'm saying, yeah. But they're on the list too, Clark. Never mind. Uh, we've had our pre-construction conference with the um, paving contractor, which is Bainbridge <coughs> out of uh, Kingsley. Uh, does a lot of work in the Sioux City area, but has never worked in Lamar's. Uh, but he's going to now, and uh, he wants to get started within um, a week or ten days. And so David Clark, the excavator, is going to. Um, uh, kind of recondition those uh, subgrades of all the different streets. Uh, that's his <coughs> door, and then Bainbridge will follow directly underneath him, uh, putting in the paving. Uh, Steve Schuster uh, definitely wants that done uh, this fall. Uh, he has sold two. One, <coughs> it, one has taken out a building permit and dug a hole. So you got a house going up there. Flooding is going in tomorrow. Footing's apparently going in tomorrow. So uh, eighteen. That's <laughs> and we didn't mention it on Crescent, but uh, yep. uh, Jesse Anthony's got the house fully up. Yep. So it's paramount that Holstein does perform. We need water. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course we need the other, and <coughs> we need the sewer too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get the water out. The um, <clears throat> the lift station was ordered by your wastewater staff on Crescent Ridge, so that was outside of the Holstein contract. Uh, we've negotiated to have Holstein install it. So it's a pre-engineered, pre-built package <coughs> lift station that simply needs to be uh, sunk into the, in into the ground. Holstein will do the install of that pre-packaged system. We've ordered it directly and we're going to pay for it direct and then we'll have uh, and a local electrician hook it up. Um, after 80 years, maybe just short of that, but 80 years of having two ponds in the municipal park. In fact, all documentation that I've ever read was 1937 to be exact, so maybe <coughs> 79 years of two ponds, no longer. We have one pond. It's going to take a little drying. <laughs> But we've got one pond. So uh, my uh, thanks goes to not only the dredging outfit, uh, but also to uh, Del Kellen, Matt Walker, uh, who came to the plate after the dredgers and uh, assisted the city on finishing the job. Yeah. 
So that's good news. Uh, we're doing some cleanup. We're doing some final shaping of the beach area. We will be putting in some uh, clean sand for the beach area to get that accomplished yet this fall. Uh, we're going to try a little, a few attempts to spread that uh, uh, charcoal uh, liquid mud around <laughs> enough to get it dried out over the winter months. It will take the winter months to dry that, I think. You're talking about the south pond. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Was. You're going to have uh, approximately two times as much beach area after we're done. So that'll be good news. Uh, first and first over here by the North Ice Cream Plant, that has been accomplished by JMAC. They did a great job on that. Um, the mayor just received a uh, notification from FEMA that our LOMA uh, has been approved. LOMA stands for um, a map amendment uh, of two of our lots in the Lamar's Business Park. Good. And those were vital because of uh, purchase agreements we have with uh, Adam Brown. And so, and another party for that matter. So um, we do have our LOMA. Construction can begin uh, if he so elects. And that could uh, involve a 30-plex. Those were about a month early, weren't they? Uh, they say up to two months, and it was about a month. I would agree. I, I kind of didn't expect it until December. But we got Don't it. Don't tell them any different. Huh? Don't tell them any different. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing a good job. Uh, well, I, think, so I think those were set in because um, there was no dirt work that needed to be done on those two. That is correct. Yeah. So the ones that... Uh, Clark is putting dirt on right now. Mm -hmm. Those will still have to be reshot and sent in. Yeah, so that's my next update is Clark is down there working on putting the dirt in. Next step will be to uh, verify the elevation and have uh, slow field engineering send in another loma for the balance of the lots down there. Um, so that's done. Uh, the airport water and sewer has been brought over to the hangar location. And as soon as Clark can uh, free up some time in his schedule, yet this fall he's going to create a building pad uh, for the future hangar, which is west of uh, Wells's hangar. And that could be for Pat Feenstra. If you recall, you did pass on a standard lease language for purposes of uh, building a hangar on that piece of property. Uh, Steve, a long time ago you asked for uh, something to fill the void along Park Lane. I was just going to say something. And since uh, we didn't get to the white topping, we went ahead and honored your request. So that's done. I won't slip off there. <laughs> uh, the two safety gates on the rail at 18th Street and 12th are 100% done and functional. Um, the final thing we've got is Plymouth and Central. If you want, I think Rex wrote the word field trip. Yep. If the council wants to take a field trip up there. It's and, such a beautiful day. Let's go walk down and he can explain take a what's look. going on. We could do that. Let's adjourn first. We're adjourning first, yeah. No, we got Jason. No, we got Jason left yet. Jason. Wait, I got one question. <laughs> uh, we're not going <clears> to <throat> um, drop the uh, shelter house project just because we didn't get our grant right. That's still on the. I mean, um, we're not going to abort that plan of updating that shelter house, are we? Well, absolutely not. Uh, you know, we're in various phases of applying for some 28 grants, and the grant you're saying that we didn't receive was REAP, and that did we got turned down <coughs> on that. However, uh, last uh, Wednesday. I made a presentation in front of the uh, CAT committee of the Advanced Iowa Board, which is under uh, Iowa Economic Development Authority, in Des Moines, and uh, 11 cities from across the state uh, presented, and we were one of them, for uh, the 480,000 grant application under CAT, and uh, the Shelter House is part of that. Okay. So uh, although the one grant got turned down, we're not aborting anything, but I've got to wait for conclusions of 
of not only the CAP grant, but several other grants that we are trying to leverage the donated money. Wouldn't there be any historical grants available for that building? Uh, we chose not to apply for that for number one, the, the fund was empty, and number two, the future likelihood of monies being in that fund uh, were uncertain. Okay. okay. So yeah. we can't start any project. No grant will be granted if the project's already started. No, I'm just really saying we're not a, we're not throwing that out just because no. we didn't get the grant. That's no. a very important part of the whole. About three phases of work are going to occur um, on the flip side of that park. Over where the, the metal shed is by the rental house, what used to be the rental house. <clears throat> We've taken off the sliders. Uh, there was two of them, about 14 foot by 10 foot sliders. Uh, the sliders going off, overhead doors are going on. Uh, Dave Arns is going to paint that metal building. Um, we're going to retrim it. Uh, the trim around the two overhead doors have already been accomplished. Um, Barclays are already put a asphalt floor in it. Uh, we've got some work for the two approaches. Uh, overhead doors are going to go on with operators. Um, so that is all part of this same CBP. What about so um, that's that's proceeding? I need all I'm getting I need at. to bring one more up, but what about? Um, Asbestos removal on CSS, have you heard back? Uh, Jason can give you a report on that. That was going to be my, la my, my only addition to Scott's list was ESA has been hired uh, to do that pre-demo work, removal of, of asbestos, uh, to begin October 31st. Okay. It'll take them a couple days. So Dell will it. still be able to get in there this year and get rid of that. Oh yeah, he will. Dell is. I've talked to Dell. He's okay. ready. He's ready to go as soon as he has confirmation from ESA that everything is clean. removed. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good and a question for Scott: Where are the Christmas parade floats, and where are they going to move to? I've had people uh, ask. Total, here. I think. Huh? Out to uh, one of the buildings out at what used to be Motor Inn. No total sales. Okay. There's that metal building that sits to the back. Good. To there. Are For the, now. Yeah. Until. We're moving them from our CSS metal building to what Jason just said. Okay. But as soon as this building I just described at the park, mm -hmm. the permanent home, permanent storage for those floats, they've been in Every no building. less than <laughs> 10 locations that I can think of. They're going to be stationed there. So I can safely sit behind the person in church and not have another question. <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. That's been quite a program. <laughs> I was involved two years ago moving those floats three yeah. times in two weeks. <laughs> I, I think it's anyway, official yeah. that uh, Total Motors has donated that metal building okay. to, to, to Little League. Yeah. All right. And they're trying to move it yet this fall. I believe so. To try and. What else is really standing? Well, I was going to talk about Highway 3 and Central, but well, we can talk you about it. Well, you go tell us about it. We'll listen. <laughs> we'll listen. <laughs> you you got you to go up you there, Jason, and tell them the full scoop. Since I've been out of your office there. Motion made to adjourn. Motion made safe to adjourn. Jason, why don't you tell us about it? Aye. I guess not, John. I walked by their company.